while travel certainly a big story on the minds of so many parents in New York City is education and their kids. A plan to reopen New York City public schools in the works despite the state being on the brink of an orange zone designation. We're going to be in an orange zone in December. The orange zone rules for opening schools are clear. They're very stringent, but we can meet that standard. It's going to take a lot of work. And as I said, parents are going to, have to be really involved, but we can do it. We're going to start with the special education schools, the District 75 schools, work our way up pre-K, 3K and elementary. That school reopening plan was one of many drawn up by the chair of the Education Committee of the New York City Council, Mark Traeger, who joins me now live this morning. Good morning to you, sir. Long time no speak. Good morning, Dan. Good to be with you. So, Councilman, this has been a long time coming, right? When you first introduced this plan to the mayor and the Department of Education sometime in the spring, correct? We worked on it in the spring. We formally submitted to them over the summer because we wanted to wait for the health guidance to come out from the state health department. Um, we shared it with him. We centered both safety and equity, understanding that we're too big to come back at the same time. Right. But there are children who absolutely do require in-person services, our young children, kids with IEPs, children who are, who are in temporary housing, children in foster care. And the mayor wanted to stick to his hybrid model. But here we are, Dan. And so we're still waiting to get more details about it. But it does seem to be a more phased in approach, which is what we shared with him months ago. And, you know, I looked on social media and there were a lot of city officials praising you for this plan. But the mayor stopped short of actually crediting you for this plan. You know, to me, it's not about credit or recognition. It's just about making sure that we're centering the needs of our children. Uh, I'm a former teacher, Dan, as you know, and education is very, very important to me. We now have children who are six, seven months with, with, without meaningful instruction. We have over 60,000 children without devices, reliable internet. We have kids in shelter who can't connect to a Wi-Fi signal. That's what this is about, Dan. So when you look at the plan then, right, and the mayor says that high-risk students will be a priority, you mentioned those devices. Does that include students who have not received devices yet or those who do not have access to Wi-Fi? Are they being put on the top priority list? So under my, under my proposal, children in temporary housing would absolutely be prioritized. Many of them cannot connect to internet because their, their infrastructure is, ina is inadequate uh, to get a Wi-Fi signal. So absolutely, all children with IEPs uh, from, all, from all ages would be a part of the proposal. Children in foster care, children in temporary housing, early childhood. So yes, uh, we would be capturing many of the children who absolutely do require in-person services five days a week, Dan. And to be clear, we have two systems operating at the same time. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned in a, in a previous segment, uh, there are families with money that are paying for five days right. a week in person services because they can afford it. I represent a working class neighborhood where families rely on the government to be the equalizer and they, and they don't have the means to, to have that. So they rely on us to get it right. So let me ask you this because we're heading into the Thanksgiving holiday, right? And there's this anticipation that the numbers are going to go up. Do you anticipate schools to reopen for in-person learning before Christmas, seeing the way the numbers are going? So, you know, my response is that we've been here before, you know, back in March and April, we had very concerning numbers, but we still needed to have a plan to provide childcare to children of essential workers and others. My proposal builds on that. Uh, the, the rec centers or the regional enrichment centers went relatively smoothly. Uh, they had safety protocols, they had social distancing, they had reduced class size. We need to we need to adapt and, and borrow a lot of those effective approaches here yeah. to this sort of rec 2.0, Dan. But we need to expand the eligibility uh, beyond just children of essential workers. And we need more than child care. We need education services for our kids. Right. So, so there have been some complaints about the Learning Bridges program, which is set up to provide free child care for families. Your plan does address to have more of that? Yeah, well, under my plan, you really would absorb Learning Bridges into, into the school day because Learning Bridges basically is a program to provide child care for your non-school days. Under my proposal, you would have school right. for young children five days a week. So that would essentially absorb Learning Bridges in, into the normal school day. And lastly, just taking a look at your plan, because I think this is very important for parents. I didn't hear quite an answer from you on if schools will if you anticipate them to be open before Christmas for in-person learning, it's okay if you don't want to answer that, but do you think that the threshold will change moving forward? 
So they have not consulted with me about school reopening. I do think we need to have something open for children in a phase and approach immediately, uh, you know, using safety protocols. Um, and quite frankly, this threshold number, they're missing the point. The point is we still need a plan to provide services for young children. We had that back in March and April when the numbers were much higher. We need it right now. So they have not briefed me or consulted me, Dan. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if it was up to me, I would already I would begin a phase and approach immediately. Our children's education cannot wait. Well, it seems like even if they aren't consulting you, your plans are being listened to somehow. Uh, Councilman Mark Traeger, I do appreciate your time this morning. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome back anytime you have any new developments and have a safe and happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving, Dan. Appreciate you. Thank you.